Story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a horror movie called Revealer. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. On a television, a televangelist urges his viewers to send money so their church can continue to preach the Lord's word. Suddenly, he finds himself trapped in an eerie room with a television continuing to play his show. On the screen, he wished hell upon the sinners on earth, so he shouts over to whoever is pranking him. He proclaims that he's innocent and was merely spreading the word of God. To his horror, a booming voice orders him to kneel and prepare his testimony. When the man claims that he didn't do anything wrong, his show replays the part when he asks the viewers for money for their salvation. The man turns the television off, ranting how he's not a sinner and only delivered God's word to the world. The booming voice calls him an abomination, but he argues that he still did everything for God. Finally, the room shakes, and the televangelist screams in fear. Elsewhere, while protesters are in front of the show booth she works in, a performer named Angie calls from the phone booth to tell someone that she's picking up an extra shift. Suddenly, a religious protester named Sally bangs on the phone booth. Sally claims that Angie is poisoning the minds of the men in town and insists on incorporating Jesus into everyone's life. However, Angie doesn't take any of Sally's hardcore belief seriously, so Sally calls her a foul person, which Angie sarcastically thanks her for. Angie heads inside the showroom and meets up with Ray, the owner. She asks for another extra shift for the night, but Ray points out that their customers like women with a different physique from Angie's. He also questions why she's taking too many shifts this week. But Angie dodges the question with a joke. Ray finally agrees, and Angie is set to dance until midnight. As she heads to the booth, Ray advises her to smile more and be less aggressive, to which Angie replies by flipping him off. As Angie passionately performs for her customers, the protesters outside desperately plead with the men to save themselves from sin. After a while, the sky begins to darken, and red thunder rages from the sky. Meanwhile, Angie is getting pissed that Ray isn't pulling in more customers for her. Just then, someone bangs the door from the outside, and Ray goes out to check it. The protesters suddenly barge in, and he keeps them out with a crowbar. However, he sees the red sky, and a great beam of light pulls him away. Angie notices that the place has gone quiet, but she stays in her booth anyway. Just then, the radio plays by itself, playing the televangelist's voice, saying that the sinners will burn in hell. Angie finds it hilarious at first, but then it turns distorted and creepy. Suddenly, sparks burst out from the radio, and she hears a loud thump. Scared, she calls out for Ray and sees him in the darkness, approaching the booth through the viewing room. When he comes closer, however, she is horrified to see him choking on his own blood. Ray walks away, and Angie is frozen in fear. When she looks at the money tray in her cubicle, she finds Ray's severed tongue. Frightened, she hurriedly dresses herself, but finds the door jammed. Unwilling to die in a show booth, she tries to tear the floorboards open, but is unable to. As Angie breaks down in tears, she hears someone from the other side of the door, recognizing Sally's voice. Sally's crying, saying that people outside are tearing each other's skins with their teeth and nails. She claims that it's the final judgment, just like in the Bible, but Angie wants to hear a logical explanation, not some story from a religious book. Because of this, Sally gets mad and blames her for everything, saying that her kind, along with the Satanists and other sinners, has paved the road for Lucifer. According to her, only people like her will be welcomed into Christ's embrace, but people like Angie will burn in hell. However, Angie doesn't care about Sally ratting her mouth off because she needs to go home to her man. However, Sally says that the earth shall be swallowed in demon-filled caverns. With this, Angie remembers that the building was a speakeasy during the Prohibition. This means they're standing on top of old bootlegger tunnels that can lead to anywhere in the city. Hoping to escape, she asks Sally to help her tear the floorboard from her booth since it's already warped and easier to break. But she refuses. Angie manipulates her into thinking that her last act will be of salvation, which works, so she begrudgingly goes to help. After multiple failed attempts to open the jammed door, Sally retreats to the opposite booth to think. While resting, Angie notices the vent above her, so she tells Sally to use the chair in her booth to climb up and go to her booth through the vent. Sally refuses, finding the chair in the show booth dirty. However, when a loud sound booms from outside, Sally climbs up, only to find the vent stuck. Noting how Angie is the one who's stuck, Sally refuses to help any longer. 
Angie then goes on a rant about how Sally and her fellow protesters are so sure of themselves that they devote their lives to ruining someone else's. She points out that her job isn't what she aspired to be, but she doesn't need to be shamed for it by the same person who claims is trying to save her soul but can't save her from dying. Enraged, Angie throws her radio onto the wall, which easily makes a hole in it. Remembering how Ray cheaped out when fixing the wall between the booths, Angie starts tearing her way out. When Sally is still too scared to help, Angie begs her, saying that despite not knowing each other well enough, she pleads for her not to let her die there. With that, Sally agrees and starts tearing through the wall from her side. When they find a board standing in the way, Sally remembers the crowbar by the entrance, so Angie tells her to get it. As she goes to retrieve the tool, she passes by Ray's corpse. After she walks past him, however, his eyes open. Sally retrieves the crowbar, backing away from the door where she hears people screaming from outside. When she turns, she finds a revived Ray with an enormous tongue. Sally freezes in fear, so Angie distracts Ray, seducing him. This gives Sally the opportunity to kill Ray with a crowbar mercilessly. Horrified by the events and what she's done, Sally tells Angie that she can't do it anymore, but Angie encourages her to take a deep breath and retrieve the crowbar from Ray's skull. When Sally returns to the booth, Angie finds her traumatized. Sympathizing with her, she asks for the crowbar so she can do the rest of the work. Once she creates a small opening, Sally goes through it but gets stuck. Suddenly, they hear weird noises, and Sally begins to panic. To her horror, a slug-like creature wraps the other side of her body and around her waist. The slug suddenly darts into Angie's mouth, and Sally desperately tries to pull it out with one hand. After getting the slug out, Angie smashes it to death. Finally, pulling Sally into her booth, they hear that the slug is still alive, so they throw it into the other room and barricade the hole. Sally tells Angie that those aren't mere slugs, but uncleansed spirits like the Garden of Eden. Angie ignores this and gets to work with a floorboard, but Sally rambles on how her inner light protects her from such creatures, but Angie isn't protected like that. This makes Angie snap, telling her to shut up and just get to work. As the two start to tear up the floorboard, Sally clarifies that she started the protest hoping that she could help somebody. However, now she realizes that shouting at people is easier than talking to them. Angie advises her that instead of telling everyone else how to live their lives, perhaps she should deal with her own life first. Finally, they break the floorboard, only to find another layer of flooring underneath. Suddenly, they hear a deafening noise, and Sally says it's the first horn of Judgment Day. This proves to Sally that her beliefs are real, so she ridicules Angie for believing that hell isn't real. She begins persecuting Angie and her man, so Angie punches her and her lady bits to shut her up. This snaps Sally back into reality, so Andy tells her to get to work again. They begin to dig their way out of the floor when they hear heavy footsteps just before the lights go out. Just then, a voice calls Angie's name, and she believes it's her nephew, David. She asks him to come closer to the window, but when she shines a flashlight at him, she gets greeted by a demon. Angie screams, and Sally immediately closes the curtains. Just then, the second horn is blown. Once it stops, Sally explains that the demon's name is Ashmedai, and he is the demon prince of lust. To some of his worshippers, he is also known as Asmodeus, the creature of judgment. Angie tries to act unfazed about it and tells Sally to continue their task. Finally, they manage to break down the floorboard, but as Sally tries to squeeze herself through, a loud voice destroys the window. Still, Sally makes it safely into the tunnel below, and Angie follows just before she gets caught by Asmodeus. Emboldened, Angie flips off the demon, much to Sally's frustration. Suddenly, they hear the third horn, and Sally notes that it signals the water getting poisoned. Since they can't do anything about that, the two ladies traverse down the tunnels. While looking around, Sally notices Angie's bleeding arm, so she rips part of her skirt to wrap the cloth around the wound. Continuing their journey, Sally asks about David, so Angie reveals he's the man she goes home to. David is her 12-year-old nephew she had to take in because Angie's brother was imprisoned and David's mother became a junkie. She explains that David gives her a sense of purpose and makes her feel like her life is not entirely worthless. Hearing this, Sally apologizes for everything, but adds that Angie at least got to live her life while she let her slip by. Angie sympathizes with her since people always made her feel that she's not good enough. But now, she advises Sally not to lose sight of herself, not even for God. This makes Sally cry, but Angie tells her to dry her tears because they have a problem ahead of them. Before them are two tunnels, and they don't know which one will lead them to the city. Suddenly, the first tunnel glows red, so the two run to the opposite side. 
Thinking that Asmodeus is out to get them, they continue to run for their lives. Tired, Sally stops and accepts defeat, but Angie remains determined. Just then, Sally finds lamps hidden in a hole in the wall. As they look inside, Angie notices a piece of paper, so she hands a lamp to Sally and takes the map. Deducing where they are now, they decide to follow the map. Moments later, they end up at the fork in the tunnel again. Angie suggests taking the right one to reach the river, but Sally figures that the left tunnel will lead them to the St. Augustine Church. However, that's too far away from where David is, and for Angie, he's all that matters. Sally believes that they must spend their last hours with God, but Angie tells her to accept that maybe there's no salvation for someone trying to be good, especially since Sally is still there with her. Sally argues that the river is probably poison and that David might already be dead. Angie refuses to accept this, so they decide to take the paths that they want. Before they part ways, Sally kneels down to put her shoes on Angie since she'd been walking barefoot. To reciprocate, Annie gives her the crowbar. After this, they wish each other good luck and go on their ways. As Angie goes through her tunnel, she realizes that the path isn't like what the map says. Her flashlight starts flickering, and she hears something behind her. When she turns back, she discovers snakes on the floor, making her scream. With this, she realizes that Sally must be in danger too. Meanwhile, Sally prays as she cruises through her tunnel. Suddenly, she hears a loud thump, and a voice announces, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. The voice calls Sally for her time of judgment. Sally closes her eyes, declaring that she's not afraid. But Asmodeus creeps behind her before disappearing. Suddenly, slugs start crawling over her, choking her. As she struggles, Angie appears and kills the slugs. Regaining her strength, Sally helps her, and they both destroy the creatures. Soon, Angie finds a door, so they hurry inside. There, Sally breaks down as she realizes that the demons want her, not Angie. She can't believe this since she's been righteous all her life. Hearing this, Angie tells her that she finally knows what it feels like to be judged and sized up all the time. With this, Sally confesses that she hates Angie, not because she's indecent, but because she can't stop picturing Sally when she dances in the show booth. Angie gets lost in this explanation, but then she figures it out. Sally likes girls. Crying, Sally admits that she's been this way since she was young, but she never wanted to be born like that. While Sally struggles to explain her story, Angie realizes that it's quiet outside, so they exit the room. As they continue, Angie expresses her disbelief over Sally's secret. This hurts Sally because she feels judged, realizing that the demons want her because she's an abomination. Angie starts to apologize, but then realizes that the demons disappeared when Sally confessed. Suddenly, the fourth horn is blown, signaling that the moon and sun will be extinguished. Sally warns that the next one is a trumpet of woes, which means the angels will come with a plague. David's voice echoes in the tunnels again, but Angie can't be tricked anymore. Because of this, they run through the tunnels, but Asmodeus claims that they can't escape. Soon, Sally realizes that they've been going in circles, pointing out the door they just exited from. A growling echoes from all directions, and Asmodeus appears before them. Sally tries to hit him with a crowbar, but he easily chokes her and Angie. Just then, they lose consciousness. Angie wakes up in an eerie room with a radio that plays Sally's voice when she judged her and when she confessed. Hearing this, Angie realizes that Asmodeus is trying to make her judge Sally, but she refuses to fall into his trap. Angie defends Sally, arguing that she accepted her identity. However, Sally's behavior was cultivated by her religion, which did nothing but judge her, so she can't be blamed for everything when she's actually a good person. After this, Angie wakes up back in the tunnel. Asmodeus is still choking Sally, so she saves her friend by smacking the demon's head with a crowbar. This releases Sally, but Asmodeus still stands. He asserts that they cannot escape him, but Angie is unfazed since she's been judged and oppressed by men every day of her life. She then tries to hit him again, but Asmodeus knocks her back. Asmodeus claims that they will die because Sally still judges her for being a harlot. Suddenly, Sally appears with an axe, declaring that Angie is more than just a harlot because she's her friend too. She then leaps and chops off Asmodeus' head. She immediately goes to Angie, who calls her a demon slayer. Angie tells her that she didn't judge her, and Sally says the same. An unknown force suddenly grabs Sally, and Angie panics, quickly losing her in the darkness. Because of this, she repeatedly smashes Asmodeus' severed head, demanding him to return Sally. Suddenly, Sally returns, and Angie hugs her. After a brief emotional reunion, Sally recounts that Asmodeus just screamed and released her. 
likely because Angie attacked his head. She warns that Asmodeus can't die, so they must escape before he returns. As they carefully go through the tunnels, Sally tells Angie that back in that eerie room, she claimed that she was the most righteous person she's ever met. Angie thanks her for this and tells her that she's pretty righteous too. They soon see the entrance to the church, but Sally questions why St. Augustine has an underground door when it's a modern church. Angie tells her to cast her worries away because they're finally facing their sanctuary. She says she can feel David waiting, so they shouldn't waste their time. Sally is still worried that the rest of the world didn't survive, but she suppresses the doubts. So the two open the door. With hands held together, Sally and Angie walk inside. Asmodeus laughs and the fifth horn is blown as the two women continue, unaware that they're trapped in an eternal labyrinth of winding tunnels in hell. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.